Plate boundaries. Earth's crust is split into pieces that are called plates. Here's the South American plate, here's the Nazca plate, and here are the Pacific plate, for example. Now, the plates of the Earth's crust are solid rock. Um, when we're thinking of plates, ignore the idea of continents and oceans. Imagine the world with no water on it at all. Imagine the world just as a rock ball with the outside edge of the rock split into pieces. Then just imagine God comes along with a watering can, pours water on top, and then the water sinks back sinks down to the lowest points creating our oceans and seas and so the plates of the earth's crust are nothing to do with continents nothing to do with oceans in actual fact if you look at the african plate here yes it's got land on it but it's also got sea on it around the edge and if we look at the nazca plate whilst it looks as if it's totally got ocean on top of it um, it'll also have islands and things like that on top of it so these are the plates now the plates move. They move because they're sitting on top of the mantle of the Earth. The mantle moves around because 6,000 degrees centigrade core heats up magma and these plumes of magma move up to the surface and then spread out along the surface of the mantle and then sink back down again. If this mantle is moving around, Therefore, the plates that are like floats floating on top of the mantle, they will move as well. Now, this session is on plate boundaries. So we're going to be looking at what happens here. And we're going to be looking at what happens here at the edges of the plates. Now, at the edges of the plates, and the plates can do four different things. We call it a destructive boundary if one plate sinks underneath another one. We call it a conservative boundary if two plates slide past each other. It's a constructive boundary if two plates move away from each other. And it's a collision boundary if the two plates hit each other and then are both forced upwards, buckling upwards. Now, what happens at each of these plate boundaries? At a destructive boundary, we get volcanoes and large earthquakes. At a constructive boundary, we get volcanoes and smaller earthquakes. At a conservative boundary, you get large earthquakes. And at a collision boundary, we get large earthquakes forming. Now let's have a look at some of the detail regarding these four boundaries. First one is the destructive plate boundary. So oceanic crust comes towards continental crust and then it will sink underneath the continental crust because it's denser and it's thinner. As this oceanic crust sinks, there'll be huge amounts of friction that's rubbing with the continental plate and it's being forced down into the 2000 degrees centigrade mantle. This will melt the rock of the sinking oceanic plate and because it's less dense than the surrounding rock, it will force its way up through cracks or fissures to the Earth's surface, forming volcanoes. Now at these boundaries, we get really large earthquakes because of the friction, the pressure buildup between the two plates as the oceanic crust is trying to sink. And when that pressure is released, we see it as an earthquake. Here is a description of what I've just chatted through. One example of a destructive plate boundary is the Philip, Philippine plate moving under the Eurasian plate, and that's created Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines. Next plate boundary I want to look at is a constructive plate boundary. This is where two plates are moving away from each other. As they move away from each other, cracks or fissures will open up um, in the middle of the two plates and molten rock can find its way up to the surface and producing shield volcanoes with runny lava. You get small earthquakes occurring on constructive plate boundaries um, because obviously the rock is tearing itself apart and magma's moving up to the surface. Here again is a description, a bit more detail of what is going on at these boundaries. One example is the North American plate moving away from the Eurasian plate and that's created Iceland and the famous volcano that erupted fairly recently, Eyjafjallajökull. 
Our next plate boundary is called a collision plate boundary. Now this occurs if a continental plate moves towards another continental plate. Because both plates have a similar density, neither can sink underneath the other one and the ends just get buckled upwards and buckled downwards and you see fold mountains on the surface of the ground. So imagine you've got two chocolate bars, two Mars bars, push them towards each other and then just kept pushing them towards each other, the ends would buckle upwards and downwards. So here is the detail and an example is the formation of the Himalayan mountains because the Indian plate has collided with the Eurasian plate. Our final boundary is called a conservative plate boundary. This occurs where two plates slide past each other, either in the same direction or one of the plates could be passing by in the opposite direction. The two plates try to slide past each other but lock together because of friction building up huge amounts of pressure. Now they can stay building up pressure for decades and decades and decades until suddenly one will jolt past the other one and we feel this as a shaking as the pressure is released um, between the two plates. We get no volcanoes because there's no holes going down into the mantle for the magma to come up. Here is the detail and a famous example is the Pacific plate which is an oceanic plate moving past the North American plate which is a continental plate and the boundary they're moving along at is the San Andreas Fault and this has led to large earthquakes in California in cities such as San Francisco and Los Angeles. Here is the San Andreas Fault, it's one of the few plate boundaries that can actually be seen from space. If you're on the ground here you just see some hills um, but from up in the air we can clearly see um, a boundary and this would be the Pacific plate this side and the North American plate this side. Other evidence that um, the ground is actually moving can be seen in photographs. Um, this is a farmer's field. Before the earthquake this bit of fence and this bit of fence were perfectly in line but the earthquake has actually moved this bit of land and so the fence is now split and then the farmer has had to put extra poles between the two fences to stop his cattle from escaping from the field. Amazing. Here is a little summary diagram trying to show you what was going on at some of the plates. And um, I think this is a lovely diagram because it also shows why we've always got the same amount of land on the Earth's surface. So here two plates are moving away from each other. This is a constructive plate boundary. And then here the, the crust is sinking underneath the continental crust here. So that's a destructive plate boundary. Here. Um, molten rock is finding its way up to the surface in the middle of an oceanic plate which is called a hot spot. If you want to more information on hot spots then please have a look at my other video um, which will show at the end of this one.